In today's video, we're going to go over the installation of the 8.4 virtual email security appliance. Just like you would expect, this appliance comes in the uh, form of an OVA file. You simply add it to your uh, ESXi inventory and allow it to go ahead and boot on start. Um, you can accept all of the default parameters when adding it to your inventory, including leaving it as a thin provisioned client. Once you've done that and the virtual machine boots, you'll be brought to this screen here. Just note that you always want to install the email appliance before you actually install email security on the Forcepoint Manager. That is one caveat, you must have at least one appliance installed, one email security appliance installed in the environment before installing email security on your Forcepoint Manager. So we're going to go ahead and just kick off this, uh, this installation. It's, it's going to be relatively simple. Uh, the first boot wizard is going to walk us through several command prompt items and we'll fill those out and, and by the end we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and start. And select yes. There we go. And I want to accept the agreement. I'm just going to scroll through this real quick. All right. And there's only one mode available, so I'm going to select one. Yes, I want to continue. Host name is going to be email sec. Yes, I would. Uh, NTP is important when installing any force point solution. You always want to make sure your server's time is synced to uh, the time that's relative uh, in your domain amongst all your appliances. So always make sure you're syncing to the most relevant NTP server in your environment. Yes, that's that. And my selection here is going to be I believe 13, but we'll just go ahead and double check that. Yep, that's correct. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like, there we go. That bar was getting in the way a little bit at the bottom. So 13. Yes, I would like to send usage statistics to Forcepoint. Uh, this improves overall product efficacy. I always recommend doing it if, uh, if your organization allows. Yes, I am satisfied with the settings. Management IP of this will be okay. You know, all Pretty simple settings, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Everything looks good here. Yes, I am. Okay. We're just going to hit enter. It's going to ask if I'm satisfied with my security settings. I am. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. 
and it's going to go through the standing up of the appliance by installing all of the necessary packages um, and software on the virtual appliance. Go ahead and hit yes. And this process generally takes a while, so we'll just kind of let it go through the motions and finalize configuration. If you see the screen grow blank, uh, you just all you need to do is click on the screen and hit enter, and you'll be able to see the on job that's going to shut down and restart the uh, email security server. All right, after uh, the appliance is done installing and all the essential configs are done uh, being processed, you'll be taken to this login screen and there's a few configurations and settings we need to go through just to make sure that everything was set up properly and there's a few extra um, things that we need to have set up before we want to go ahead and associate it with the email security on the Forcepoint Manager. So let's go ahead and log in and we'll go through some of those. All right, I'm just going to type help so you can get an idea of kind of the, the base commands that are available to you. Uh, the first thing we probably want to do is just do what's called a show appliance info command. It shows some general information about the appliance itself and just make sure that everything that you wanted to have installed is is installed properly and also verifies that you're logged into the correct appliance. So after we've done that command, let's do a show interface info. We can just verify that our interfaces are configured correctly. All right, everything looks good here. And we're going to get around to configuring the uh, P1 interface in a, a little bit later in this configuration video. So let's go ahead and now kind of move on and we'll start checking things like the system clock and make sure there's a description given to uh, this particular appliance so that when we look at it in our security appliance manager, you know, we can have a, a clear understanding of what actually what it is. That's uh, especially important in larger environments where you have several different appliances that maybe serve a different segment of the business or maybe you're hosted in, in different locations. Putting a, an accurate description or a detailed description in there can really help identify those. So we'll first go ahead and just check the uh, system clock, make sure it's synced properly. We can do a uh, show system clock. All right, that looks good. Next, we want to go, want to check out the um, system host information just make sure our host name is cor uh, correct and as you can see there's no description we're going to go ahead and add a description real quick so we, in order to do that we need to go into config mode so we'll just type in config enter our password for the appliance and then do a set system 
post description and a single quote. I'll say call this email security virtual appliance. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter. That's set. Once you're in config mode, you can run all the show commands as well. Um, config mode just also allows you to run the set commands. All right, now we're going to go ahead and create a file store for the email security appliance. Uh, basically, the file store is, an, is a remote storage location for storing appliance backups, log files, uh, technical support may export and config files to it. Uh, it also acts as kind of a repository for hot fixes uh, as well as uh, local um, upgrade patches uh, for the, your next system update. Uh, so it's pretty necessary before um, finalizing the email security appliance config. It's definitely something we want to do ahead of time before we even associate this appliance with the email security manager. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, the command is relatively simple. I've actually already inputted it and I'll, um, I'll show you what it looks like here. So it's set file store, you want to give it an alias name, so make it something descriptive. I, I called it email security file store. Type is an, I did chose an FTP server. You could choose between FTP, TFTP, and Samba. I put in the name of the FTP server, uh, the host name of it, or the IP address. Uh, and then path is important. So you not only want to define the path to the FTP server um, or to the FTP folder, which is FTP, but you also want to do a forward slash and actually define that uh, name that you want to give the folder where all the, these uh, files are going to be stored. So you can see I did FTP slash email sec file store. Now I only have one appliance in my environment, so I only need uh, one of these. Um, I'm not 100% sure if you have multiple, if you can point multiple appliances to the same file store. I think you can, but it's worth double checking. Um, and then you just specify a user and the port that you're going to communicate to it over. So if I hit enter here, it's going to ask me for a password to the file store. All right, the file store portion is configured. Now let's move on to uh, setting up a password or an email address for uh, password recovery. So we want to go ahead and do set accounts email and address. And I'm going to go ahead and All right, now we want to go ahead and set up the SMTP server that the appliance will use to send that password recovery notification to. Um, it'll also use this for other um, appliance-based email alerts as well. So we'll go ahead and put in the information here. I've already got it uh, set up. So set account SMTP, put the host, the port, and the uh, username and then you enter the password for that user. Now this is a uh, standard Windows user. This is actually the service account that I use for any and all things Forcepoint. Alright, so that's set up and you can send a test email by entering that command. I'll go ahead and do that. It's sent successfully. I've already verified it's working. So now our next step is to configure our P1 interface. This is probably one of the most important steps because you have to have your P1 interface configured in order to send um, outbound and receive inbound emails. So we'll go ahead and start on those. This should be relatively quick, so we'll go ahead and do uh, set interface. 
IPv4 interface. I believe I can only select from P1 with the virtual client, so I'll put interface P1. And if you have a physical appliance, then I believe you will be able to select from E1, E2, P1, or P2. Um, however, the virtual appliance uh, or, um, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, just the, in the virtual appliance, uh, you only can select from P1 and P2. All right, so P1, you give it an IP address. And again, all these configurations and the commands that you need to execute them are all located in the uh, Forcepoint documentation. Uh, if you look at the appliance documentation for virtual appliances, it will all be outlined uh, in a step-by-step -step fashion. That's actually what I've used to kind of go through and figure out the correct flow um, when configuring all these uh, different pieces of the appliance. So we'll go ahead and do get IP. Let's specify the subnet mask. And then finally, the gateway, or our default gateway, which is going to be, oops. All right, let's double check. Um, I am, I'm missing my two dashes before interface. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. There we go. All right, command looks good now. Let's go ahead and try this out. And again, this is doing this through the CLI is, uh, is useful as far as quickly going through the appliance and, and getting this set up before you associate it. You can simply configure all these in the security appliance manager, which is a UI based appliance manager that you install on the uh, Forcepoint manager server. I have another video showing how to install that. Uh, however, the CLI, once you get pretty proficient with it, you can get through these configurations pretty quickly. All right, so now I want to go ahead and do set uh, interface. I'm going to set up my DNS now for this interface. DNS module email DNS one. And then I'm going to do DNS2. Then after these are set, I'm just going to run a show command and verify that uh, the appliance settings look correct. And after that, I should be about done with all of the uh, kind of necessary upfront configurations that need to be done on the appliances. You can do other things like set up SNMP polling, or SNMP traps, you can configure static routes, um, you can do interface bonding if you need to. Uh, however, I, I'm, I don't need any of that uh, completed in my lab, so once we verify that the interface configurations are correct on the appliance, we will conclude this video. All right, that looks good. So let's do a show appliance interface info oh. let's see let's just show interface info all right so let's just double check we have a p1 on the email configured and everything looks good. Now we can just exit out of the config and we have a completely set up virtual email appliance. Your next step will be to install email security on the Forcepoint Manager. Check out my next video series to see this happen.